Okay, some of the exceptions with electron configurations have to do with partially and half-filled sublevels. First of all, we're going to look at exceptions that involve elements copper and silver. And just to make a note that filled sublevels are generally more stable than having only partially filled sublevels. So this really takes into consideration in the d orbitals when they're filling with electrons. <clears throat> if you look at copper, atomic number 29, argon, and then 4s2, 3d9, there's only one unpaired electron in the higher energy orbital of, of the 3d sublevel. So what we generally do is copper, and it's more stable electron configuration form, we take one electron out of the 4s and actually fill the 3d to have a full configuration of argon, 4s1, and 3d10. So having that filled sublevel that has higher energy anyway tends to be a more stable configuration overall for copper. So um, one of the exceptions to the rule is that copper will take one electron out of the 4s, fill the 3d orbital, making a configuration of 4s1, 3d10. Now, um, silver is also an element that is in the same exact group as copper, and as we find that elements within the same group or within the same period have similar traits and characteristics. Um, silver's configuration, and to just use the shortcut form, KR in brackets, 5s2 and 4d9. Um, and if you take a look at the same similarities between silver and copper, you'll notice that there's paired electrons in the 5s. However, in the 4d area, which does have more energy associated with that area, those orbitals, than a 5s orbital, only has nine electrons. So that left, that electron left over, unpaired, in this higher energy orbital creates a little bit more um, energy associated with this electron configuration. So silver will take one electron out of the 5s and fill the 4d orbital to make a more stable configuration. And leave in the final configuration, krypton in brackets, 5s with one electron, and 4d10.